Well hello I'm Chris and this is my Chevelle bucket seat video. In this video we're going to be restoring the seats in my 1970 Chevelle. We are going to be doing the complete upholstery job so just fast forward and we'll start to finish that whole thing in one little segment. We are going to be covering all the parts for the 69 through 72 Chevelle bucket seats. We're going to do a parts list. I'm going to go through every little thing as we put them on the seats, tell you what I did to them. All these are original. I've just restored them the best way I could. We'll talk about them as they go back on the car. You may seriously want to consider trying to reuse what you have and then later on if they look that bad you can always replace them because these parts on the seat add up real quick and to a lot of money. We're going to be putting the internals on for the locks and headrests and I'm going to show you how to restore your uh, bases and backs. We got some original headrests. So this video is for people that are serious about doing their seats. Even if you're going to go take them to get reupholstered professionally, just watch the video because you kind of got to go through your seat frames and check some things out. So the number one thing is, is try to wait till the last minute when you have all your upholstery and everything ready to go before you start tearing down these seats. The reason for that is it's real easy to accidentally throw this away and then you forgot your position for your emblem, buttons, or medallions or whatever. And you also want to do that so you can take your covers off and see how they were secured and hog ring to the seat frames to get a real good idea. Double check everything. 66 through 70 is going to have a listing wire. If you look these up, they'll have uh, seat cushions with or without listing wires. It really doesn't matter which one you buy. I'm going to show you how to make some listing wire. You need to get these things cleaned up. These have been like lightly sandblasted and just kind of lightly primed. You got to get them in the light or outside. Sit them next to each other and you're going to be comparing the two looking at each frame for any kind of inconsistencies. Every single spring has to be checked. Here's a repair I made right here. You can see the broken spring. Uh, we've replaced that little section. You're going to have to double strap them. Anytime you make a repair it's got to be double strapped. You'll kind of figure that out when you, if you have to make any repairs though. They sell kits on eBay that'll have these in these little clips. But the best thing to do is if you can find a donor seat. That's a 69 four door lower seat. And you can kind of see how many springs that we've had to use almost half in every single little clip off of that donor seat. And you can see a healthy spring. They're an eighth inch diameter. They're pretty strong, but you can bend them with some pliers using leverage. You can bend them by hand. And the test you want to do on your springs is you're not supposed to be able to bend these by hand. So it's very important to go through them. And if you see something thinned out like that, give it a test. Just squish it. And if it doesn't go back to shape, you really do need to make a repair on that spring or replace it. See, that's not normal. So if we would have used that spring and not replaced it, it would have eventually just cracked. And you can see the healthy springs. You're not bending these. You can, you can hardly even bend them with pliers. You have to have every single tab on this seat frame because each one of these is designed where a hog ring is going to stretch that seat cover over there. So you have to look at every single freaking part of this seat frame and check for every single one of those. Okay, so let's just say you have one or two randomly. All you do is bend your little coat hanger like this and stick it in there, tape it, whatever you gotta do, it'll um, secure it somehow. And that's all you gotta do. Once you put that hog ring in there, it's never gonna come out. You need to inspect these, make sure they got the place to hog ring. And we're gonna take these bolts out of both sides and separate the top from the bottom. The screws are similar to the door hinge screws uh, with a smaller washer, just 5 16 coarse thread. Okay, so we're ready to do the upholstery, but on the 69 through 72, we have the locks right here, and we have to put our parts in for our headrest. So here are the, the locks. Everything has just been sandblasted thoroughly in there and painted black. That's all I've done. You can see they're pretty bad. You gotta sand this down real good. Okay. So for this, we're just gonna spray a bunch of white lithium grease in here. Okay, so for the locks, they're gonna use these two short quarter inch coarse thread and then this little 5 16 head screw. Okay, so we got the two bolts on top. It's very important to look for any signs of where this may have been aligned. Make sure these two are done first and then tighten those. So 69 through 72 use headrest. You have to get all this in here before you put the upholstery on them. So all this is just, I've just washed these in bleach soap real good. So I don't have the original screws. They were rusted out. 
So I'm just using self-tapping screws. They just use one screw to secure them to the frames. Yeah, don't tighten them all the way yet. So now we got these two plates. They've just been sandblasted really good and painted black. It's very important to make sure they have these two holes good because that's where these are gonna screw down to. So these are gonna use these long, small head screws. They're gonna sit flush like that. We left them loose to align them. So now it's very important to put your headrests in here and just make sure that they go in there. There's nothing binding up. All right, so now on to the upholstery part. So I make videos for people that have no idea, don't have any friends in cars, but want to do this on their own. I'm not a professional upholstery guy, so just use this video as a guide, but it should be pretty, pretty close to how it's done. This is a hog ring, hog ring pliers. That's all you need. All this does, you look at it, it's going to clamp this thing like that. So that's all that means when I say hog ring it. Okay, now the bottoms and the tops are going to be done just a little bit different, but let's start with the bottoms first. You're going to take your burlap. This is real cheap. I think it's a $3 a yard. The burlap is important because it's a barrier between the steel seat frames and springs and the soft cushion. So it's very important you put the burlap. Uh, they put that from the factory. This is a lower seat. So a lot of times what happens is, you know, getting in and out of the car right here on this edge it starts to rip so you need some kind of reinforcement and I mean you can do whatever you want you can put uh, some foam or whatever but if you don't really want to screw around with all that just kind of triple wrap this thing so got the spring right there we're gonna go over it double it and then we're gonna triple it and then we're gonna hog ring it like that tripling it Then you want to get the seat foams. Take your time and just make sure that this lip is where it needs to be. Okay, now on a 66 through 70, it's going to have these spaces. So whenever you're buying your seat foams, it's going to have with or without listing wire. So all the listing wire is is eighth inch. If you don't have it, you can possibly use a coat hanger. But for this part of the listing wire, you really do want to get your eighth inch rod. This is like three or four dollars from Home Depot and to paper coat it really just put some tape on it. So we got our wire. We're just wrapping some masking tape around it. I mean, that's it. Or you can go to an upholstery shop and I'm sure they have it. And what we have to do is make sure they're positioned and we need to cut through here and we need to mark this space on our burlap because we have to attach this listing wire to the seat frames because it's gonna pull our seat covers down. So this is absolutely 100% important. Okay, so you can cut it all the way or just make little holes, it doesn't matter, but we're just gonna put one hole right here and one hole up here, just to mark it. Okay, we're just taking a Sharpie. So you gotta bend the end so it doesn't slide up and down. So you get them in there and we're going to hog ring the listing wire to the seat spring. So it's kind of important to probably get at least five or six hog rings in here. Just make sure that that is super sturdy. All right, so if you're looking at these seat kits and stuff they sell, or if you're taking yours apart, you'll notice that there's this cotton and it's usually garbage. And you can buy that cotton, but it's super expensive. They only sell it like in large quantities on the internet. And a lot of upholstery shops don't even use it anymore. So you have to get some kind of synthetic cotton looking stuff. And this, I think I got like four yards of it. It was five or six dollars a yard. And it's just some kind of uh, synthetic batting. Uh, so it's about like, I don't know, a half inch thick. So you kind of got to quadruple it. You get what I'm saying to make that padding like the originals. So I got enough to do two seats. You only got to do the bottoms. Okay, so I like that. It's just a little bit of extra padding like the factory style did it. So now we got everything laid out to put the seat covers on. But we need to get a hole right here in the foam and a hole through this foam stuff down to our listing wire. It doesn't really cut too good with the razor blade. If you have this available, a butter knife and a little torch.
So you see all we did there, we just cut slits in it to access our blue listing wire on both sides. So we have our new upholstery. There's really no point in trying to steam these right now or do anything to them. You're just gonna have to put them on the seats and then try to get the wrinkles out. These are the two places that are gonna attach to our listing wire. So it's important to look and make sure they have something in them. These already have some kind of like plastic, I don't know, piping in there. But if they don't have something in there, you're going to have to make a listing wire. All right, so this part is hard to see in real life too. But all we're doing is we're trying to hog ring this little flap down in there to our blue listing wire. So we need to position everything exactly where it needs to be. So these are hard to do. Just take your time. You want to get about six on each side. So what we learned on the other side just now is to pay attention to this flap right here. And you can see it goes all the way to the back. So if it does, then you're going to have to cut the foams all the way down, all the way to the, it, to the back. And it kind of worked to our advantage where we had to cut the foam all the way because now we can actually bring it to the side and let, it, let us look in here a little bit better. It doesn't matter what direction it's in, just do it all the way as tight as you can okay so the next part is you want to get your covers like this folded just like that we're gonna to have to flip them all over at once but if you look at your seat covers right here they don't have any piping they don't have anything uh, to secure a hog ring to so we're gonna to have to add the listing wire So we got the wire in there. We're gonna attempt to pull everything over. So I actually had to redo the bottom part over. So let's talk about that so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. Okay, number one, these are the OPGI foams. They're two for $132. You're gonna have some that have this paper that comes over, or this cloth that you wrap around and you hog ring. That's really what you wanna buy. PUI makes those. My Chevelle friend told me not to buy these, but I mean, I ended up buying them. Even though we triple wrapped that burlap, let's just pull this back. When there's nothing wrapping them back, they just kind of want to pull in right here. So this wire on this curve starts showing on your seat covers and it's not right. It looks bad and it's also going to prematurely wear your uh, seat covers out. A good foam like the factory is actually wrapped around the springs you know like that so there was no issue but these don't wrap around the spring they just kind of sit there and in this situation I was having so many problems with that wire showing so we took the hog rings off that's a big thing don't have any hog rings on this curve right here on either side we still have the triple wrap burlap which is fine now this is where this stuff actually comes in handy. So we got this excess, we're gonna wrap this over that corner. And we're also gonna take some more and we're gonna put it right here in this area. So what's gonna happen now is when that foam does that, the seat covers are just gonna squish all this in there and give us some padding on that wire. You can put the listing wire in now or after we pull them over, let's go ahead and pull them over. You wanna make sure that this edge is right over that wire. Okay, I'm talking about this because this is the biggest and hardest part of doing these seats. Okay, so please take this seriously. Get your seat cover like that. You wanna reach in here and you wanna push down from the inside and you wanna squish that as much as you can while you try to push this over. Squish it down. And then you try to pull it over. The other thing is since we split the foams, you kind of want to just make sure that they are being packed in there. In other words, push them back towards the listing wire or the split. And just make sure that they do feel right. You can kind of feel them. Just kind of get them like that. Flip the seat over. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to do the center. We want to get that center all the way over there. OK, 
Okay, we got a listing wire through there. We're gonna try right here. Okay, that one's kind of hard, so we're gonna try that, that one just about right there. All right, get all these secure. So that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna hog ring to about halfway. Then we're gonna stop because we got two back there we gotta do. So you get the idea? Hog ring in that listing wire like that. Pretty simple. So freaking exactly what I was just talking about. See how we got this side right? And we did it, we did this side the same freaking way and look. The damn foam is riding up. This is because there's nothing to hold that foam over the seat spring. The seat spring is right here. You see, we got that padding on there so it doesn't look too bad, but we gotta redo that. All of this will work itself smooth, but just stuff to pay attention to if you want your seats to come out right. Okay, so we stopped about halfway. We gotta do these two back here. Okay, so this is the back where the little rubber goes. You see this piece, this little flap right here? We've already had it attached with two hog rings right there. You got to do this on both sides. All right, get those done. Now we can finish up. Okay, so this back part's kind of tricky because this little flap has got to be hog ring down here. And it's going to pull the back of the seat down. So it has that piping in there. We're just going to go ahead and use it like that. So it's kind of hard to see, but that's what we're doing. We want to get one on each spring. Once you get that bottom strap hog ring to the springs, it's going to pull that part down. So now we're looking at our seat covers and we got these two little corners on both sides that are going to fit over this. So kind of stretch them out or whatever, get those corners kind of in place where they need to be. So we have this pulled over where it needs to be. You got this issue right here with these springs showing and that can prematurely wear your covers out or you know, look ugly in the future because this is a, a coupe and it does have back seats. So people could, I don't know, they might see that. This is just a piece of cardboard, use anything. It's just cut to fit in these two grooves just to kind of cover up the springs and hog rings. And we're gonna stretch it and we're gonna hog ring it right there. Center this, hog ring. Okay, so we're gonna stop. We need to get the other side done, attached before we can uh, strap all this down in hog ring. Okay, so the seat backs, the same process with the burlap. Get your foams, cut them, position the listing wire. Okay, so very important on the backs. We got our positions for our listing wire marked. You see, I had to take these off. These need to be hog ring to that. I had them hog ring to the springs you might have to hog ring them to a spring too, but see, they need to be hog ring to these straight pieces. That's very important. Let's go ahead and do them and take a look at them. Okay, so just make sure you're hog ringing to the straight ones and not the springs and see how they're kind of sunk down in there like that. Make sure this is in place. We're gonna try to find our holes and just kind of mark where they are a little bit. Now we're going to put these on. Let's hope this works. All right, so that seems okay to me. We're not even going to cut it out or anything. We're just uh, poked a hole in it and the foam just kind of conforms around it. Something like that. We're going to put these back on. I was looking through my stuff and I actually had one. So when you're doing your seats, study your medallions or buttons. It makes a world of difference whenever you have that on there than when it's missing. 70 Chevelle, six inches from this. Okay, same thing, get them comfortable where you like them. All right, so now we're gonna flip them over. Uh, remember when you're doing your corners to put your hand inside here, compact the foam and then pull over. All right, so you get the rest. We're just gonna try to massage all this even with the sponges. Okay, so we're gonna try to fasten it up here first and then we're gonna do the bottom and then we're gonna do the sides. We're gonna hog ring it right there. 
So just make sure your clips for your seat backs, you're not covering those. So go under them. We got this top part ringed. We're just gonna try to fold this over and pull up. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bottom. Got this flap right here with this piping in that needs to be pulled somewhere. It kind of shows that maybe something was clamped right there. So we're gonna go ahead and put them there. But So man, I, I didn't even think about painting these. Flap right here, it already has the piping in it. It's gonna be pulled up like this. You got two. And then we're gonna hog one over here. We're gonna fold this in. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull it over. We're gonna put one right here and then another one right here. It takes a lot of freaking strength to get these final hog rings in there. So just be careful. Pull them down, get these, and then do these two. Now let's talk about steam. The reason they use steam on stuff like this is because steam is a controlled heat. If you get you a heat gun, I mean, you'll see a range from like 400 to like 1100 degrees. So that can be a problem. Heat is controlled. I don't know, when, when does water boil? Like 212 or something. So if you don't have a, an expensive steamer, you can get just an iron like this. I bought this when my daughter was young for her perler beads and it has a steam feature you can already see it and that's all they're doing is just heating it up until it softens the material and this is a control heat that's not going to get hot enough to cause damage i think this costs twenty dollars you can get these real cheap and you can sit there and you can already see it's kind of uh kind of working it out a little bit so i'm going to show you some footage right now how I scrub these with bleach soap and just paint them with the black dye the vinyl dye so the seat backs are pretty simple to do. Scrub them down with bleach soap. I've already done them, so we're just gonna do this piece. All right, so when I talk about bleach soaping, as soon as we wash them off and dry, they're ready to be sprayed. You wash something like this it has to be immediately freaking dried or you can ruin it you might think they look good but after you scrub them it starts to show a lot of stuff and if you spray one thing you got to spray everything see we're gonna have to do the headrest too because they're not gonna match One of the things to pay attention to on your original seat backs or whatever you get is these little ends right here. If you have these little ends on them, you're not going to use the little chrome end caps. If you look at magazines and they have these listed for 68 through 72, it's because they usually sell some real crappy reproductions. So if you're going to buy reproductions, you really need to buy from a local dealer so you can see them in real life because a lot of the reproductions are very flimsy and cheap and crappy and you're gonna be mad if you don't approve of them before you get them. So these have them, these are from a 70. You're gonna to have to get you some piping. I guess that's what they call this. It's just plastic chrome plated stuff. This is gonna cost you around 30 to $40. Let's see if we can cut it with scissors first. Okay, 
That's that's good. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. We're gonna go ahead and get them all ready to put on the seats. Okay, so we're about to put the seats back together, but we gotta put these rubber stoppers in. You could do them now or later. So you could reach something in there still and just kind of poke a hole or mark you a hole. All right, we're gonna put the damn seats back together. So these are the little headrest locks. These can be very expensive. What I did to these was I actually got some steel wool and I sanded off that silver until they kind of turned all into plastic and just spray paint them with some silver metallic paint. These are the original type screws. I guess they go on there like that. I thought they went on there like that. Let's just get them on there. I'm gonna go back and paint all this in greases. Just doing it for the video to give you an idea how okay so we got to find these holes so these screws are quarter inch coarse thread they're the only ones like this on the car now before we put that lock in there we got to undo these because there's a lock right here lift them up pass the lock make sure they lock release good got the chrome in these already hook them you see we have an issue right here we might have to go back and put some more padding in there uh, hopefully it just works itself out they have three screws right here and the seat backs i believe are attached with these screws that look like this are about an inch long phillips the button is going to use some just like the seat backs but they're just shorter they're about three eighths or half an inch Okay, so these are the seat release buttons. These are original. They've just been quadruple zero steel wool and then bleach soaked. They do have a little bracket on here. Unfortunately, my brackets are both rusted off. I'm going to have to make some, but for right now, I'm just going to stick them in there with tape or something just for the video. They go in there. Oh, okay. Okay, so for the seat tracks, mine had this extra weird looking handle and a straight handle. The extra long weird handle is for the passenger side. So this is for the driver's side with the straight handle two holes go to the back so the track goes on like this these have just been sandblasted as thorough as i could get in there and painted black so the tracks are on there so anything that shows right there needs to kind of be pulled out where it looks neat we got this thing we, we got to stretch it straight we're going to hog ring it right here it's like that get that side pulled and then you can get this other one and get it pulled and hog ring it there too i'm going to go back and make this a lot neater okay and i'm sorry i'm not going to be able to show this but these are real simple you got places to hog ring around here doing the same thing just pulling them stretching them out the real super simple to do that you're just trying to flatten out this panel for these they're going to hook over this now get them hooked over these are going to use three of these they're supposed to be shiny but i just had to sandblast and paint these one right here two in the front these are just the original chrome handles that I saved and just kind of touched up with silver paint. Okay, original headrest, bleach soaped, painted with the vinyl dye paint. Well, that's it for the video. This seat's ready to go back in the car. We still have some wrinkles up at the top, but don't worry about stuff like that. If you just finish your seats, those have been done for about a week and all the wrinkles and everything are getting out of those. Those were done last night. So don't worry about that just set them out in the sun try to massage them with your hands a little bit put some steam on them but don't freak out if you have wrinkles on your seat covers because it's going to happen and i'm sorry i didn't wrap the bottoms like that but it's very simple to do that you just make them look neat we got the headliner coming soon somebody walked on my damn headliner why anyway if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and thanks for watching